Well, welcome back to Cheddar, everyone. I'm Corey Hale, joined by the one and only J.D. Durkin right now. Good morning, everyone. So good to be here. I'm, Thursday, I'm glad that you're right? Here. Thursday already. Thirsty Thursdays, Thirsty throwback Thursdays. Thursdays. If you're in college, you know what that's about. All yep. right, guys. A startup called iSpot TV claims to be able to measure exactly how well a commercial translates into sales. Joining us now to discuss more is Sean Muller, founder and CEO of iSpot TV. Sean, thanks so much for joining us right now. Thanks for having me here. We're glad that you're here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Explain yep. to us for some who don't really understand exactly how iSpot TV works. Yeah, so what iSpot does, we measure impressions, attention, and conversion for TV advertising. And we do it by tracking every single ad across 10 million IP-enabled or smart television sets all across the U.S. So it sounds like a uh, similar, but I know there's uh, certainly a, a, a lot of departures from what we've seen out of like a company like Nielsen do for many years when it just comes to kind of natively tracking what viewers are watching. Talk to us about some of the key differences between what you're doing and what Nielsen has historically done. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Nielsen has traditionally provided the measurement that has supported the $70 billion uh, TV industry. And what Nielsen does is they really measure the programming. They measure linear programming using a small panel. And then they measure the ads by virtue of measuring the content. So in the old world, that worked really, really well because ads used to always travel with the content. Everybody watched linear television and it was the same ad loads, the ads travel with the, with the content. Today, television is changing so rapidly. It is extremely difficult to now measure not only the content, but especially the ads across all these different mediums, uh, streaming and on demand and other mediums uh, where content and ads are now being delivered to television. So what we've developed is a system that can follow the ads around independently of the content. Uh -huh. So that way you can see as long as an ad shows up on a TV screen, okay. whether it's via uh, somebody watching Cheddar on Roku or, or, or somebody you know, right. watching Hulu, we will see the ad and we will count it in an unduplicated manner. So that's really the breakthrough that the smart television along with our other technologies have brought to the market. So do you think there are elements of the old Nielsen way of doing things that by this point are becoming increasingly obsolete? Well, no, I don't, not quite. I, I mean, I think when, when you look at, at television, so first of all, we, we define television as a device that sits okay. on the wall right. versus a service <laughs> sure. because a lot of people get confused about saying, oh, people are watching less television. So, yes, it, people are watching less linear television, mm. but people are not watching less TV as a device. And they're certainly not engaged with any less content now. They're engaged with presumably more, more content more, literally than ever before, right? Absolutely. They're bombarded by it. Absolutely. It's more content. It's more fragmented, which, again, is putting the old system under pressure because the old system was built when you had you know, a few channels and everybody used to tune into the same program. Yeah. So you could do it that way. But now content is, is, is really fragmented. It's everywhere. There's a lot of ways to get for it to get onto the TV set. So what we've done is we've really decoupled the two. There's the ads and there's the content. We actually don't measure content. Okay. You know, we, we only measure the ads. Right. And we're hyper-focused on that and we're able to see the ads across these different uh, mediums, whether it's Hulu or Roku uh, or it's linear. Now, Today, still, m most advertising, when you look at television, 97% of ad impressions on television are still being delivered via linear television. So what's happening is ads are behind the content because there's a lot more content that gets viewed in a non-linear fashion on television. But the ads haven't quite followed, and a lot of that is because of the measurement. The measurement just hasn't been there to support that. I know you guys have a partnership with video, specifically around what you're talking about, that ad impression data, but when if I... And use that on some sort of Vizio TV product, and yeah. I go into Netflix or Amazon, and, and it's ad free. How does that really work out? Well, so by and large, advertisers really don't care about those mediums today because they can't place their ads there other than program integrations. So, really, there's no inventory available in those programs. For, so, from an advertiser, from a measurement perspective, there's really not much to measure there for them. But in all other environments, what advertisers want to know today, which is the other difference from, from the past, is not just how many people you reached, but did people actually pay attention and did people convert or buy your product or visit your website or download your app? That, that's really what advertisers want to know. That's been available in the digital world, where we've essentially brought that to the TV world. 
there was a, a Goldman Sachs analysis, if I'm not mistaken, not too long ago, of you guys essentially said this could make for a pretty prime uh, acquisition target, given some of the unique elements that you guys are bringing to the table. Kind of what's your take on that? Yeah, there's there's a lot of activity in the markets right now around um, around measurement yeah. uh, and and TV services in general. You probably saw the the uh, Oracle acquisition of Moat uh, recently. Uh, for us, we're not focused on that. We're focused on building the best products in the marketplace and delivering uh, the absolute best measurement for advertisers. Now, I want to talk a little bit actually about smartphones and in terms of what's going on with Samsung. Yeah. I know that Samsung's yeah. been outpacing Apple in terms of impressions kind of generated, especially yeah. within this past quarter. Why is that exactly? Yeah, so interesting, some interesting data on, on, on Samsung and the category in general. So if you look at the last quarter, we, we saw Samsung outspend Apple uh, in terms of advertising on TV. We also saw higher attention rates on their ads. And we know from our own data that attention correlates highly with conversion. And sure, sure enough, you can now see the earnings release where, where they release some, some phenomenal numbers and phenomenal growth. You know, we, it appears that Samsung is sort of the new Apple, right, in terms of product design and, and making really cool ads that people that resonate with folks, and, and our data shows that. Okay. Oh, all right, there you have it. Sean Muller, CEO of iSpot TV. Thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. All right, folks, coming up, how much should consumers worry about recent hacks at Chipotle and Hip?